East. Uh, who's in who's in what place? Welcome guys. What's up? We here. We are here. We are live. Title Tuesday is real. It's very real here. Okay, so check out the standings right now. Four out of four for international from Russia, Cuban, 1991. We're in round four right now. The big boys are facing off title Tuesday. That's just how it goes, guys. That's just how it goes. But we're going to check out MVL, the man himself, Maxime Bashir Lagrave. Let's see what's going on here. After a queen to C8, he is, looks like some type of, oh, this is a Slav. Okay, yeah, not, not my style. Not my style at all. Not my style, but we will see here. This is a nice little pawn structure here as it does do a lot for the center here. It even controls e5 here. So sometimes double pawns aren't a bad thing. But if the key, if the pieces start coming off like queen for queen and one of the knights, this wouldn't look too good unless we're able to play e5. If we're able to play e5, then we're good to go. We're good to go then. Okay. Cool. Okay, good to go. What's up, guys? Welcome to the stream. Hello, chat. What's up? This is Title Tuesday. It's going down. So we're watching MBL play right now. Of course, he is. Uh, he has three points. The top people have four um, as of now. This is the fourth round, though. So let's see what happens. Okay, what was the last move? Knight to d6. Queen where? Yikes. Dang, look at this queen. I can't go to any of these squares. I can't go to any of these squares. Knight c4 hitting e3, probably king f2. Am I okay is the question. Oh, b2 is hanging. Ouch. That's a pawn. And a pawn is a pawn. A pawn is a pawn. Thanks for the prime, Jake Dodger. Appreciate you. Thanks for the prime here for chess.com. King f2, that's a pawn. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. And now queen to c3 is very annoying for queen d2. Queen takes a3. And look at, again, these pawns, how they're stopping everything. Like, what do you do? Queen h4. I mean, you got to do something. Queen h4, the intention is knight h5. Because you got to do something here. These pawns are locking down everything. As weird as that is. Queen h4, there it is. Queen h4, hitting f6, knight h5, and we live. That is what we're trying to do here. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, we playing. Yeah, they're playing right here. We in here. What's up, Hess? GM Hess can't play chess without Hess. What's up, big fella? Welcome to the stream, bro. So what just happened there? Yeah, he did take on f4. Why did he take with the pawn, though? Let's go back here. We thought queen takes was best because you at least have the range. Queen kind of stay around here a little bit, I guess. Pawn takes a little weird. Now the queen's just looking crazy. Like, well, how do you even get out, right? This way? Wow. Wow, that's not a move, bro. That's just not a move here, right? But black's definitely in the driver's seat here. Queen a4 looks very annoying, but it's also away from the king. Yeah, queen a4 all day. I mean, I'm hitting all kind of stuff back here. Queen h7. It's kind of annoying. He's trying to play it safe here. I understand. He's playing it safe. Moving the king around. Yeah, he's he's gonna he's gonna take the long route. We're gonna take the back way, you guys. King d7. Maybe, yep, a5 looking good. But how do we untangle now? How do we untangle? Ooh, nice move. Nice move there. Queen g7 is real. Queen g6. We take the file with a smile here. King, oh, b5, and we live. But he says none of that. Coming through the back way, your back door is open, big fella. How do we get in there? Oh, my goodness. Tactics win games. Did you do your puzzle rush today? Oh, my goodness. That was beautiful. Come back around. Nice c4, and that, that's it. That's a wrap. That was beautiful tactics there. B5 and b4. Wow. Tata, whoa, MVL's back from Tata still. Yeah, take the file with a smile. You already know. That's right. MVL's back from Tata still. Yep, he is. He's like, you know what? Yeah, I didn't do so well there, but that's okay. I'm about to take it out on you guys here in Title Tuesday is what he says. Let's check the standings. Let's check the standings here. We got a lot of fours, lots of fours. How many games do we have left? About a dozen, a little bit more, yeah, about 20 games left. Let's check this one here. Whoa, crazy position. White's definitely winning. This is compensation. Three pieces for a queen, oh, just in case you're a beginner and you didn't know, is always compensation here. We don't know why he's not resigning here. Oh, it's because it's, it's the flagging part, but he's the one down on time. He's the one down on time. And it's 3-1. You can't actually flag here. It's three minutes, one second increment. You can flag. Of course, don't move. Watch. Your time will run out. But three minutes, one second increment. Like, 
this is just over here king here h5 h8 i mean uh, h7 h8 gg yeah we just played that game all the way out it was for you guys they wanted to show you guys this oh wow yikes oh man did he just hang that and that's what happens when you're in time trouble this is a wrap though this is going to be over soon here it's going to be over soon we have to snag this pawn. This is the best way for winning chances is to get this pawn. If we get this pawn or will when we get this pawn, it's probably only a matter of time. But the Rick's doing a great job defending. He did move it now, so now it's gone. Uh, Bishop f6, very nice. Rick takes h3. Rick g3, everything up. Pretty easy. Pretty easy. This is cool, too. It works. This works. Bishop g5, king here, even better. Approaching, check. Bishop g5 for bishop f4 if he checks me. We're going to push. Why not? Same thing. All the same. h3, setting up a mating net. H3 was setting up mate. Check. King F3. Ooh, he's kind of messing this up. You are definitely messing this up. King F3. Okay. Check. King here. Rook around. There's a check. Block with the bishop. Mate on the back rank. So you have to go here. There it is. I think you go the other way. That works too. I got an extra pawn. That extra pawn is real. Right? That's all you needed. GG. GG there. Let's check the standings again. We got two games left. Lots of fours once again. Wonderful time. Min Lee. Min Lee, number one. Look at that Olympiad, right? Min Lee, number one up there turning up today. Um, Shamanov, Shamanov, Alex Shamanov. Very, very strong. Very, very strong GM. Uh, out of the Webster camp, actually. He went to Webster. Knight of six. King here. Beautiful. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. No draw techniques, right? Okay, cool. And there's mate on the back rank. Oh, he got out of the way, though. He got out of that. Knight. That's pretty good. This is still over, though. Knight, pawn, rook, easy. And now we're forking here. GG. That's a wrap. Start a new one. Start a new one here. Okay. This is supposed to be a draw. Oh, and there it is. There it is. Wow. Was it 50 moves? They just accepted a draw. I couldn't figure it out. Yeah, this is, this is, you're supposed to play on, you know, until the 50 moves at least. Not Just don't take a draw there, guys. Don't take a draw. But what we're going to do is take a quick look at the standings real quick. We see fours. Wow. Shaman off and... These others actually pass Min Lee now, Lion Beast. But these are all four. They're all tied up, guys. But, you know, we'll return shortly right after this break. Of course, we're going to take a quick break, literally very quick, and we're coming right back, guys. So enjoy.
All right, guys, and we're back. We're back. This is Title Tuesday, the big boys play today. $1,600 prize fund. And let's talk about the format before we get right into the rounds again. 11-round Swiss It's every single Tuesday. Title Tuesday is going to be a lot of fun. Of course, you see all the big boys come out from everywhere across the globe. Three minutes, one second increment. And here are the prizes. You got $750 for first, $400 for second, $150 for third. Fourth place is $100, best female $100, and best stream $100, guys. Now, check out these upcoming events. Look at this. We got the FIDE Online World Corporate Chess Championship. So, of course, you can find more on chess.com about this. But actually, uh, it's going to be big companies. I know for a fact Google is actually playing. The company Google has chess players. So you can represent your company to see if it's in here for the FIDE World uh, Online World Corporate Chess Championship and go play with uh, other companies and hopefully smash them for your company. Now here it is, Pog Champs 3. I hope you are excited. Let's get some hype in the chat. Pog Champs 3, we got uh, GM Hikaru, the man himself, Danny Wrench, and Botez Live, which is, of course, Andrea Botez, uh, Alex Botez. So pretty, pretty fun stuff, right? Of course, we're going to have a lot of fun there. Pog Champs, as you see, look who's in here. We got a uh, Pokimane, Ludwig, Rain Wilson. You got Critical, Mr. Beast. I mean, this is absolutely crazy. Mr. Beast from YouTube, guys. Chess is blowing up. I hope you're already... I hope you're excited as we are for this. This is going to be mid-February when it starts. XQC is coming back, and he's getting better. He's getting better, guys. He's getting a lot better at his game. But look at all the names here. We got Logic. Guys, Logic? Really? Pog Champs 3. I mean, this is blowing up, and you guys are a part of this. You guys are a part of this, right? So it's going to be fun. I hope you guys are excited for it. Now let's get back to some chess here. Waiting for the round to start, and... It's going down, guys. Round five is about is approaching. Is there a way I can view the tournament games with the analysis bar myself? You actually can. You have to go to play live chess and click the evaluation bar. You can turn it on. You can always turn the evaluation bar on there. My ton of chef, you queen. What's up, Jackie? What's going on, man? Welcome to the stream, guys. So round five has just started. As we see, uh, first place is four right now. A lot of people with four. We're going to check out MVL, Maxime Vachir Legrave, the Frenchman. Very strong here, starting with one C4. An English opening, very strong, honestly. There's many ways you can play the English. This is the most boring way to play against the English. I know from personal experience. This is extremely boring, and it's the symmetrical variation. And all you do is basically copy White's moves. It's so annoying. I used to hate playing against the English. So if you're an English player, hey, shout outs to you. If you're not an English player and you're looking for something, maybe try the English because it's annoying. Like this is one of the best ways to play against the English and it's boring. It's symmetrical. So I play Kings Indian defensing against everything. So it works, man. But that English is something serious. Queen D7, that's like a novelty. I don't know. What is this move doing? Do you think it's a mouse slip? I don't think it's a mouse slip, but I think it is a weird move though. He got to have some type of plan here. Queen D7, he's just playing it first, I guess. Maybe, is he casting queenside? Probably not. B4 looks kind of annoying for that position. Hello, what's up? What's going on? What's going on? Nyang. Nyang. Mm. Yeah. All right. How's the family love all that? Yeah, man. Life's good. Chess is great. Chess is life. Life is chess. Everything's great. Everything's great, man. So A3. Waiting for GM Igor to move here. He takes on C3. Usually when this happens, guys, because this bishop is the strongest bishop. It's even stronger than a rook. And many times. With that being said, giving this up is, is suicidal, to say the least. Okay? Suicidal. Because the, we have a bishop here. So are, if you put your king this way, we're going to put, put this bishop on a long diagonal and do our thing. Or maybe put it this way as well. But you don't have an opposing bishop. Look at that. You are in some trouble around the dark squares here. So this is a very committal decision um, from GM Igor here. Now, of course, this may be some type of theory here. Strange position, though. And uh, we do need to figure out what to do with our king. We're either going to go this way or that way. But we need to get this king out of the center. This lineup right here is extremely scary right here. Bishop g5. That's a great move. Stopping e4 from, or e5 from ever happening, actually. Stopping e5 from ever happening, actually. What did he play? Knight d2. This is great. Yep, he's taking advantage of this pawn. Bishop a6. Yeah, he's making it close. This is very smart. Of course, he's 2877. You know, so of course he's gonna find these right plans. But check this out here. Why is this plan really nice? Well, you have to play to the minor pieces that you have. What minor pieces does black have? We have knights. So because we have knights, we want to keep the position closed and play in a closed fashion and try to trade one of these bishops ASAP. So he did castle. Of course, we do have dark square weaknesses, but they can't be exploited due to the queen doing a great job of defending the squares around the king here. Queen b3, that's a scary looking move. 
I mean, it feels like the evaluation bar should be a lot higher right now. But that's real scary. Queen B3, like, how do you defend this? Maybe B5? I guess you do have some moves, but that, that's pretty scary. We can't, we can't, there's no denying that. We also can put pressure on it, knight e3, and then you defend it. Guess what? Bishop f1. We're putting everything we own onto this knight. Maybe a4 first. So if a6 captures, captures, we just clarify that immediately, forcing bishop takes. Then play something like knight e3. There it is, a4. Then play something like knight e3, and then captures and bishop f1. Because, of course, if rook takes in that line, we're going to take on f6. There it is, a6, snap, snap. Rook takes a8, and then there it is, snap, snap. And then we're going to come back the back way, knight e2 or knight e3 or knight to d2 with bishop f1 being the intention here, snapping this knight off. Because we're still down a pawn. It's white here. It says MVL, so we need to get this back. He took here first, I guess, because E4 is hanging in some lines. So that is correct. That's why we take here first. But Knight E3 is now very strong. And we got our pawn back, and Black's doing fine, though, to be honest. Black's doing fine. As you see, the evaluation bar says it's completely equal. So it's, it's pretty equal here. Pretty equal. Especially after Queen takes here. I mean, look at the pawn structure, right? Black has a better pawn structure. So, you know, it's definitely equal. It's definitely equal. This pawn is weak, though. And black's kind of pressing, but not really. I mean, this 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 should be a draw, but we'll see what happens. This should be a draw, though. Thanks for the tier one. Appreciate it. Thanks for gifting the sub, buddy. Yo, know, yeah, maybe C4, lock it down. But that's really bad. If you think about, you know, in games 101 here, this is very nice. This is nice compensation to have for a bad bishop. This bishop's gross. Absolutely gross. 100% terrible. This bishop is doing nothing. But the other, his counterpart, absolutely great. We can do anything we want. We want to pressure in any any way that we want. Really, now this and this is the compensation. Like this rook's very strong on the seventh rank here. It's quite annoying, actually. Maybe put hiding the king, but that's not even hiding it in a way. He's actually taking that square away now, and you have to deal with this pin, which is quite annoying. You can't play, but how do you increase the pressure? Oh, yikes! Okay, and go back maybe. Yeah, bishop f1. Now here's the idea: rook here and bishop b5. But there's still nothing. Like, everything's defended. That's so crazy how everything's defended. Like we said, guys, this probably be a draw. This looks like white should be pressing. But, like, you can't. You can't do much. You can't hold everything. You need literally one extra piece. One extra piece. Great move here is defend it. Like, what do you attack, right? If you can't attack anything, there's not much else to do. <laughs> but you have to try to pry anyway. So he's playing rook b8, trying to do something, maybe bringing a queen around. Trying to, uh, to do as much as we can, honestly, out of the position that we're given. We would love to get the bishop on this diagonal, but unfortunately, impossible. Yep, Rosen ended up winning. Congratulations to Rosen as he goes on to play my boy Levy. And uh, that's going to be a tight matchup. It's going to be very, very fun. Highly anticipated matchup there. Bishop e2. Bishop e2. Yeah, it looks like a draw, but I'm going to play on three one three minutes one second increment thirty seconds here for Igor. He's down thirty seconds on time, so that's a lot. You can press forward here, and he's, he can definitely make a mistake in this situation because his time his time is very low. This is a nice move, uh, attacking the rook. Get off of the file. Get off of my territory. Get up out of here. So the the rook has to go. Bishop takes h5 is a move, and he's actually doing queen takes e4 in that situation, saying that, hey, you can have this one, but I'm going to take the center pawn because it's worth more, creating an extra nasty-looking pass pawn, and b1 is going to be hanging. So he says, uh, none of that, not today. Queen e3, he's going to attack it again, maybe forcing a concession. Maybe not. You could play bishop d3, but again, it's passive again. f3 is a concession, makes weaknesses around the king. So bishop c4 and bishop d5 is a uh, is potential, but this he's not going to let that happen. He comes around the back way, maybe trying to get this in as much as he can. Yeah, Rosen will play Levy. It's going to be nice. Now that I will watch. Yeah, Alexander, it's going to be fire. Queen d7, there it is. Trying to play queen h3, rook b1, queen h7 here, or queen h3, queen g5. Beautiful play. I like it. It's defending. The queen looks scary, but it's not doing anything at all. We might as well back it up, to be honest. Bishop f1, we're going to back you up anyway. Anyway, there it is. Queen e6, and now what? Yeah, this is, again, what do we say? Like a drawish position, right? They're just kind of move, maneuvering here. I'm going to try to flag him, says MVL. Uh, pressure him on the time or on the clock because his clock's extremely low here. Rook takes, takes. And what do we do next? More pieces off? Maybe king h2? It's kind of far away from the center. Idea was bishop h3, but he just plays bishop c8. Queen d2. And maybe king h2. Bishop b2 takes, takes. Cannot let these pass. King f2, though. Consolidate a little bit. Queen g5 would check on the back rank. King f2, once again. There it is. King f2. And what do we do? Six seconds for Igor. 
Queen e3, no trades. Queen d6, defending everything. Looking like a draw's position here. It looks like a draw, but looks are very deceiving in chess. Let's see what happens. e4, <laughs> evaluation bar went crazy. The evaluation bar like, this is not a draw. And then it's like, now it's a draw. Can we see Artemiev next? Uh, Sib Elephant, yep, yep. He's still, oh, he must have, yeah, he just finished his game. He just finished his game. Let's check the standings. Did he win? Yeah, he won. Five out of five. He's pushing tight today. A lot of fives. Maybe not a lot. Like, you know, I don't know, half a, a dozen, maybe a dozen. Something like that. Ten. But uh, fives. Look at these fives, guys. With a lot of chess left, though. A lot of chess left. Lots of chess left. And this game did end in a draw. Indeed, it ended in a draw here. E. Hansen, shout out to the bras. Chess bra in the building here. And White wins. He comes in with a big boy win here. Eric is on fire as well. Look at him hopping in there. Five out of five for the boys. Great job, Eric. Great job. And Bortnik has three. So he's not doing bad. He lost probably one game, maybe two draws. But most likely he probably lost one game. So... So you you have the you can lose about three games total in these uh, in these uh, events and still place you still place so here three and a half he's doing okay he he needs to go on a streak though streak is gonna do it for him five out of five for the bras five out of five for the bras here guys yep that's a resignation GG or actually flagging a few games left in this round that one's over cool we'll go to the next one. See what else is next. This is the last game here. This is a draw. Ho hopefully, you know your end games here. This is a draw here, guys. King up. It doesn't matter where you go. And there it is. Yep. There is a draw. Very good way to end that one. Round five is over. Going into round six with GM Elgasanov. Elgasanov. Five out of five. Min Lee still holding it down. Five out of five here. Lots of chess left. Eric Hansen with five, guys. Let's see who we have at the top right now. Top game would be Artemiev right here, Quinn. Right here. Knight of three, very flexible move. And B3 playing the Nakamura here. Hikaru plays this all the time, right? Every title Tuesday. Last time he actually switched it up a little bit, but we did see this anyway. Eventually, we came right back to this. But this is pretty good. What do the numbers 10, 9.5, 9 mean to next to the 5? Those are tie breaks. So the tie breaks are, are, are who did you beat, basically. Who did you beat? How did they do? Things like that. So it's a um, um, tie breaks. Yeah. Sonnenberger. Yes. G T wild Knight to C3. I like these positions. These uh, I'm not a Nimzo Larson player, but man, these positions are very scary sometimes uh, to face. I actually had a lot of problems against this um, before when it was very popular. Not anymore. I'm actually doing quite well against it now. But for an unprepared opponent, which could be you. I know it's a lot of you in the chat right now. You know, you have to study this line against it and maybe even take it up yourself if you're looking for something different from the usuals. Knight of three, e4, d4, English is this is a great one. And Hikaru has popular popularized this lately um, because it's just nice. Like, look at the strong bishop here. Strong bishop. You can kind of it's flexible. You can do what you want. And then a lot of times starting with knight f3 first, actually, instead of b3 says that hey you know I, it feels like you're playing something different right so a lot of people for against knight f3 i play knight f6 first but then when they go b3 afterwards now i have to stick to what i'm actually in because i play e5 against b3 move one so it's actually a great way to trick your opponent into lines that they may not even notice that they're in or have problems with so pretty pretty nice position actually how he's handling it nice center here two pawns in the center are always better than one we have an open C file, but rooks first to the file here. Bishops are developed. We just need to get the queen off the back rank and connect the rooks. And we have an excellent position, actually, as black here against this Nimzo Larson setup. White probably didn't play it as aggressive enough, but there's many, many ways you can play this. As you see, D3, kind of a, a more passive setup, to say the least here. This is probably not the way you want to play the Nimzo Larson system. It looks like he's playing with the black pieces. It looks like colors are reversed here. This is very, very solid defense. I mean, def solid, it's developed, but it's very passive. Black, on the other hand, has everything looking a little bit better. Knights have a little bit better coordination. We have a little bit better control over the center here. Hey, hope you're good. I'm new here. Gamer J27. Welcome to the stream, man. Welcome to the stream. Hope you're enjoying us today. Rook to C8, H3, 
it's just a move. I mean, it's just a move. Like, make a move here. Maybe making a little loop from the king, but it left, but it does it doesn't work. And it probably stopping something from g4, but I think I would take black in this position. Just because we're pressing, like we feel better. More space. Now pushing one of the pawns could be premature. If you push this one, we push this one in many cases. You could. Tactically, it may work out. There's there'll be double pawns there, kind of weird. Pushing this one allows this one. So you have to be careful of when to push the pawns. That's why he's 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 moving everything around it. What they say in Grandmaster Chess is keep the tension. Keep the tension. So this is this is pretty tense here. We don't want to really give up anything yet. So what is he doing? Developing and they're maneuvering. They're maneuvering. Maybe pushing now, but knight g3 is uh, is an option. You always have to look out on uh, for when they're going to push this pawn. Rating 245. That's okay, man. Get on chess.com. Go to the lessons tab and go to work. And go to work. Room for improvement there. Absolutely. What are the best starting tactics? Um, go through the themes. Just you can just run through all the themes on chess on uh, the tactics tactics trainer. Knight to g3. Kind of just a weird position, to be honest. Nobody's doing anything. Now he's like, all right, let's do something. Because it is boring. They're just <laughs> You're going to maneuver pieces and do nothing. And now he's like, all right, push. Let's go for it. E4. So this is very committal. Now after takes, takes, we have the d4 square forever. But actually, in between move, very nice Jishin Zug there. Bishop takes g3, allowing double pawns here, but giving up the bishop pair in the process. Very committal axe here, which could change the whole trajectory of the game. It actually does already. Two bishops here, open game, knights on d4. Now I prefer white's position, just because I you know, I love the bishop pair. Bishop pair is a slight advantage, and in an end game where it's getting closer to it, these bishops are going to thrive. So let's play maybe rook to d1 for some type of threats, but this is hanging. So king h2 has knight h5. Yikes, that's a good move. This is a really good move. Queen g3, how do you defend that without losing material? Knight e2 is like gross. Like this is the, is this how you defend it? I don't see another option. You have to maybe go for counterplay. The best defense is offense. So instead of defending it, is there any offensive move we can make? He couldn't find any. So he played knight e2, bro. Like, I'm just going to play knight e2. This is a gross move to make. I really want to keep this knight here, but I guess... I guess we're okay. We could play knight f4. g5 is very tempting in those lines. g5 is very tempting. Black's trying to press. And he gave the bishop back. And now it changes again here. Weak pawn on e4, but can be defended. Double pawns for white. Virtually an equal position, we would say. Equal. As long as we keep pieces on. If pieces start trading, it may favor black. Just because of the double pawns here in an end game. Be very careful. With this kind of stuff. Rook to c8. Rook to c1. King h2. G5 is still there. G5 is definitely a possibility. G5 and h4. So if I go g5, what are you going to do? He's going to move the knight. And then f6 will be hanging. Which is tied to f7. So no g5. He says, I'm going to come into the position here. And look at his time here. Artemiev is having a, a very hard time with this position. I mean, he's having a terrible time. Like, and now he's down a pawn, double pawns here. This is losing. He's going to have to go for tactics here, which is not always a bad thing. Tactics win games. But here, in this position, the tactics do not flow right now. The queen is, is too far away from the action. It's going to take us like three moves without trading, by the way. But three moves just to try to get over here to mate. That's going to be a while. If we move this queen, then maybe we might have the potential to come around the back way. See if the back door is open. Go for a mate here. And it goes back up. He missed something. Uh, I would love to play. Yeah, it doesn't work. Doesn't work. Can't get the queen in there. I cannot get the queen in here. What if we just take this? Yeah, I just take the pawn and just ask him, what do you do next? Knight d5 takes, queen takes, threatening all this stuff. That's not actually hanging. So he plays queen d4. He's down material, but you got to keep this back rank in check. But I can run now. I can run. There's no knight. There was a knight here stopping all of that. Takes on h4, queen takes h4, and queen d7, maybe queen e8 afterwards. Could be a thing. Queen d7, queen e8. Rook here, I don't know. Rook takes e4. That's the position we're going for here. He's fighting. Come on, Artemiev. He's fighting, my guy. <laughs> Look at this man fighting his way out of this. Check, king here. Uh-oh, wait a second. Hold on. Hold on, your back rank is extremely weak. Yes, I understand. Back rank is real, real weak, big guy. Real weak. Rook f2, and what do you do? Rick F2 was winning. Oh, wait, they had to check, right? Oh, my goodness. Rick F2 with a home mate. Gross. Oof. G6. That's why he played this. He's... What? What happened? Evaluation bar equal. It's equal now. Oh, my goodness. Look at him find a way out of this. Look at this man 
fight his way back to something. They do call him Chuck Norris. You know, they do. They do. I forgot they called him that, Quinn. I just, you know what? Slipped my mind. Didn't even, couldn't remember. King H2 check. Yeah, this is, whoa, whoa, wait a second. Oh, there wasn't a rook check. Whoa. Hold on. Don't block with your face here. Don't block with your face. And there is a draw there. He escaped Houdini. He escaped. He was definitely lost there. But he found a way out of it. Six out of six. Eric Hansen for the boys in the chat. Oh, my goodness. Eric Hansen is going off today. That was a fun game. That was a very fun game. Six out of six here. Eric did not come to play, but he did come to play. Uh, that's crazy. Great stuff, man. Renato, oh, I haven't seen him in a while. He's doing pretty good. He lost this game, though. Looks like he lost that game. Okay, what's going on here? Black's completely winning. Easy. Easy one here. You have to keep this this king to be able to be sheltered by the pawns. If you were to push, you, you almost can't avoid checks. Almost. You have to come closer to your rook and block just like he just did. But it's a technique to this. It's always a technique to this. This is a win, and there it is. Black wins on time. Great job. Anton. Korobov. Oh, wow. Bishop Knights. Hold on. Did you do your Bishop Knights lately? Jedi Masterclass, what's up? Hold on. Bishop Knight, mates. Let's go. Let's go. How do we made him here? Because this is not my forte. Oh, he found it. Great. That was awesome. Let's go back. Hold on. This is very, very nice. Look at this, guys. Wow, so he got it. First off, you got to get him in the right corner. He got the light square bishop, right? So he moved it back, stopping king h3. King goes here. Now you have to try to do it um, like how he did it here. Check, check. Is that what he did? Knight g3, king h2. Yep, check, check. Beautiful. He found it. I mean, like this is, you know, we've seen many cases where this is what, this didn't go this way. Even in 3-1, you know, 50 move rule happens, things like that. You can't let him get to the other side. He did it, man. You did it too. Nice, James Conway. That's what's up, man. A lot of people can't do that. You'd be surprised. You would be surprised here. Oh, this is a draw. The king is in the right place. He's trying to queen, but the king is in the right place. You can always cut the king off more. There's no way to get this king off of the, the crucial squares. So we go back and forth like this. Back and forth. These are the crucial squares to keep the draw, and there it is. If we step up, though, that's GG. Have a nice day. King B1, and I think you're queening. There are some checks, but I think you're queening, depending on where the placement of the rook is there. Let's take a look at the standings. Looking great here. Six and six is here. Eric Hansen. And he should be in a top dog spot now. He should be playing one of the top dogs. Let's check out E. Hansen. Look at him playing MVL. Look at this matchup, guys. MVL versus Eric Hansen. I hope you're ready for this one. Nine of three and D5's on the board. E3, flexible, flexible ready. C4 is definitely a possibility. And these plays B3. So something like a ready, early E3, Nimzo Larson type, I can play whatever I want, right? That's what you call this opening. Because there's so many moves you can make here that it's almost impossible to study. I mean, it's not. But there's just so much, so many different move orders that it's like, oh, is it this move or is it this one? And you get bogged down. So, you know, you always want to just have some foundations and some fundamentals, like develop your pieces, right? Very solid setup here. It looks like a London system backwards or similar because the bishop's not on f5. But the, and, and the London system and the, and the uh, with the white pieces would be bishop on f4. Of course, bishop on f5 would be a backwards London system here with the knights on the squares. Bishop comes to d6. This is not a bad setup. If you don't kind of know what to do or you need something as a go-to, something easy, as black, especially playing against maybe offbeat or not even offbeat, just kind of different openings that you're not used to, like d4, e4. You can always go for this very flexible setup as a London system backwards here, where the intention is to play e5 uh, and e4. In many cases, there it is immediately, e5, playing e4 a lot. We actually saw this with the uh, with another. MVL actually, I think MVL was playing that position. Yeah, he won that game. He was playing the game, we, I think the first game we looked at today was the same position here. Yes, Lion is MVL. Lion Beast is Maxime Bashir Lagrave, guys. That is him. That is him playing Eric Hansen. E4, I'm loving Black's position here. Feels like White definitely misplayed this a lot because this diagonal is very, very strong. In many cases, we can play moves like Rook D8, Bishop here, and then move the Queen to D6 and, and, and go for this because his King's probably not going this way. If he plays B4, nice. Yeah, he's definitely not going this way anymore. Knight f8, bringing the knight to g6. Knight h4 is extremely annoying. 
Look how he's pressuring a position. So he traded here just in case b6 does happen. And this bishop's going to be what they call a snake in the grass here or a long range sniper. At the same time, we're going to be um, attacking and using this this di this uh, diagonal as much as we can. So bishop b6. But you also can't, if you think about this, he didn't play b6. But if b6 happens, well, there's a few things that happens. This bishop is out the game forever. It doesn't do anything. It looks ridiculous. But at the same time, you can't actually use a battery with the bishop and the queen on the diagonal like how rare is that you you, you usually don't have these kind of um these positions like this so after rook h8 rook h1 there's bishop h2 and uh yeah, wait, wait what did he do hold on let's go back he played bishop h2 rook h1 and then bishop back to b8 okay sniper yeah thanks chat so who is the favorite in pog champs three hard to tell right now um you know xqc was really good xqc was really really good at that uh, I mean, he was, uh, he was, he's doing good. He's actually taking lessons too. Like XQC is probably one of the favorites, depending on how are the others, the others play too, as well. Who are you guys going for? What about you? Donut eating bear. Who are you going for? So Rick to G1, defending the G3 pawn. Um, yeah, sniper is a bit coward to be a sniper or smart. I do not know, says Jackie. Rick G1, defending the pawn. No king castling is not going to happen. Um, what's next? Uh, knight of five, Rick G1. Looks drawish, though. Eric Hansen's playing. You have to say that, though. You have to say Eric Hansen is really putting on a show here against MVL, one of the strongest players in the world. We like Black's position. Now, we have seen he was beating, what was that game? That was like, what round was that? That was one of the um, one of the title Tuesdays, and Hikaru was losing to Eric. I think he swindled him, too. I think Hikaru won that game, too. But Eric was, like, completely losing and just messed it up. Hey, how's everyone? What's up? Chessman1963. Uh, you have your money on Ludwig? Oh, let's go. Ludwig with time trouble. <laughs> Will be hard for Brokey. Not a lot of uh, players, lower rating than her. But hey, you just keep working on your game, you know? It's uh, Pog Champs, like, I think 13 days away, something like that. Two weeks, maybe. It's, it's coming up. It's coming up. So you have time to practice on your game. You can be a different player. You should be a different player every day. So two weeks, um, you should be growing a lot as a player. G4. Still like Black's position, lots of holes, and this bishop has to sit here. Like, there's a lot of holes here in this position. Knight e5, hitting b7. Queen, whoa, whoa, I'm not, I like this counterplay, but I don't. Maybe king d2. The intention, rook b1. There it is, king d2. Oh, he played rook h1 because he was going to try to come around the other way. If I go this way, I'm coming around the other way. That could have, oops, that could have been a possibility, rook h8. Shout out to Eric, though, pushing tight here. Eric is playing some great chess right now, as you see. Well, he is down on time, which is a huge possibility for him to make blunders when you're in time trouble. So Bishop goes to C7. The question is, how do we press forward? We are down a piece, basically. Can't do anything with this piece. It is holding. There it is. Pawn takes. Oh, cool. We got the bishop active now. Or do we take this way? He took with the queen. Maybe play queen B6 was, was what he's trying to do. Hold on, man. We got some play on this side of the board. And you have no bishops, and this is a knight's game. This pawn's hanging, but I don't really want to take that. I don't think I'm taking that pawn at all. Knight g6, maybe knight h4, block the file with a smile. You can't really do much afterwards, though. It's only blocking the file. So you need more than just that. It feels like playing MVO, I thought he chest out. Oh, no. Oh, no. He's not chest out. I mean, he's doing great. He's actually, you know, what is this? Uh, five and a half. He's right behind people right now. If he wins this game, that'll put him up, right? Six and a half. Six is the highest. Next year, we will see. You. Yeah, that's right, Jackie. Let's go. Rook B1 for Rook B7. I'm loving it. Yeah, as you see, Eric gets in time trouble here when, when he's playing the big boys. I mean, who wouldn't, right? Like, you're playing NBL. Like, you, it, it would be disrespectful almost to not be in time trouble. <laughs> like, you have to think. You have to really think against these guys. So, he is in time trouble here. But at the same time, he's pressing him. He's pressing him, right? Um, MVL is definitely pressing. Knight, the knights look kind of weird now. I mean, they're definitely gross-looking pieces now. That's right. What's up, Canty? What's up? Frosty on Earth. Welcome to the stream, man. I hope you're doing well. we got Title Tuesday, guys. Uh, uh, f 2 hanging. He's not going to take it because E7's hanging. Time trouble. Oh, wow. He takes it. He didn't even care. Oh, because he got Rook H2. And what do you do? Wow, he's crushed. This is over. Come on. Is he going to be able to find it? E. Hansen. Oh, my goodness. E. Hansen jumped off the deep end there, blocked with his face. There, he's supposed to take first and then rook h2. Oh, my goodness. Oh, heart dropped. Heart dropped. Knocked everything off the table. You're probably going to see a chair fly. If he's streaming right now, chair might fly. 
a mice a mouse might break <laughs> yikes just take on it take first then rook h2 that was all he had to do but time trouble again is usually his culprit time trouble is usually what gets him in trouble here dang eric mm -mm -mm. it hurts oh my goodness it hurts painful painful eric almost had it he did have it he had it he just messed up the combination he did have it there and eric goes down and mvl was like Phew. right who got away okay got away we're good we're good don't do that again and he's off and look at that he won that right put him at the top six and a half the man has six and a half now a few people with six and a half just a few and about a dozen games left in round seven. Rook a4, I like. Wait, okay. Never, never mind. King's over here. Feels like Felt like the king was over here at, quit, at first glance, but who would you rather be? Look at this pawn structure. Like, very rare. Very rare. Oh, undoubled. It's not doubled anymore. Wow. Look at him pushing through. C4 taking on B5. If you take on B5, that's a blunder. B2. Can I sack? No, that wouldn't work. Let's just not do that. Just don't give him that type of counterplay. Feels like Black's doing great, though, after this file run here. Knight takes e4 as a move. Can you just... Well, you can't do it now. b4, that's a good move. I like b4. Just trying to divert the queen. And also, yeah, he did. He diverted it. Knight takes... Rook a4? Come on. Oh, that was not the move. Knight takes e4 because he had queen e1 once again. This pawn is still hanging. Still hanging. That was over. Knight takes e4, hitting the queen and the bishop at the same time. GG. Bishop takes, oh my goodness, and white is winning. Wow. Wow. He blocked with his face here. Queen takes d6. Oh, it's coming. Give me everything. It must go. I hope you did your tactics today. Yikes. This is GG. Give me everything, please. Rook b1 check. Why not? Just throw the rook in there. Queen check. Everything's with check. Everything's with check. Oh, man. That hurt. That hurt to watch. That hurt to watch. That hurt to watch there. Like, let's go back here. Right here. Knight takes e4 was the move many times. Maybe it, it was there a few times. Queen h6 was a blunder, but knight takes e4 is just winning. Well, maybe he has bishop takes b6, so it's kind of annoying, huh? So you have to, have to do it the other way around. Reverse the move order. Rook takes f2. Now knight takes e4. Yikes. Man, that's tough. That's tough, man. That's tough stuff there. He missed rook takes f2. Well, let's see. Uh, oh, look at this. Uh, oh, draw. So, nice job here, Kostniuk. Alexandra Kosniuk, very, very strong player. Very, very strong player. So she got the draw there. This should be a draw as well. This should be a draw. I literally, you only, all you have to do is shuffle the king. If he moves the rook, you can try to go here and do this. But, I mean, especially if he's going to keep you cut off here. I don't really know what they're pushing for, to be honest. They're kind of just pushing. Right, I love James Seymour. Thanks. Appreciate you, bro. Rook takes f2. I know, right? Hot stuff. That was definitely nice. Rook takes f2. Bam. And what do you do? Yikes. Yeah, he blocked with his face. He did. You know, if you ever block, like, just don't block with your face. That probably is not the smartest thing to do. So, Misha Nick, though, seven out of seven. Great job here. Seven out of seven. We in round eight here, guys. We are in round eight now. Let's take a look one more time at the standings. Seven out of seven from Misha Nick. Running away with this one right now. People are close behind, though. They are very close behind. But he is the only one solely with 7 out of 7 as he faces MBL, the man himself. And we have a French man. Look at him. Okay. Oh, no. This is Carol Khan. No. It just kind of felt like a French because knight c3. But this is Carol Khan. So we have the Carol Khan stuff here. This should be 2. This is uh, the newer versions of, not newer, but more top level players have been playing knight c3 here. Because it gets away from the theory that you're usually noticing. That you usually play like the advanced variation um, or, you know, all these other variations you can play that are standard. This one is a little bit different. Played more often these days because it gives more flexibility and more chances for, you know, different kind of games. Is Nakamura playing RS Richard? Yes, he is. But I think he uh, dropped a game. I know he dropped one. I'm not sure how many other games he dropped there, but he did drop a game. So the man himself is Magnus Knight VL. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's funny. What's up, what's up? What's up, Blitz Crank Crankbot? 
Knight c3, bishop g4. Oh, sorry. Let's refresh the game here. This is the live position. Let's actually go back a few moves. Sorry. Okay, so here we go. Bishop e2, bishop c5. Now, I used to play this as white here. It's flexible, but sometimes it's just kind of annoying. Black gets some weird positions in this. So bishop e5 hitting the queen. G7 was hanging. So we back up. Whoa. Wait a second. What, what is this position? What is it? Wait, 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 wait. What's the piece count? What's the piece count? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. That was crazy. So was it? What did he take? Okay. So he played queen g3. There was d3 on the board. We snapped the knight. Bishop d4. He came back around. And then he took the pawn. Oh, man. Like, what is this? What is this? When do you get positions like this? You don't. I like white, though, because the bishop pair. Bishop pair is pretty nice. Uh, we do have pressure on g7, but this bishop is a monster. I am never moving this bishop. You will never give me off this square, even if you tried. Now, of course, the only way would be opposing the bishop. But then again, we, we give up the bishop pair, which is what black wants. Going into a position where this bishop actually isn't as strong as it can be because it's not hitting anything. Everything is all solid. So, I mean, MVL is actually putting on a show, just showing his strength here as he's going to keep this bishop here and not move it. It is not going anywhere. And now we play queen f6 here to even anchor it in even more. Wow. That is crazy, man. That is crazy. Let's go MVL. What's up, man? Bishop e3 and bishop, bishop e3. And yeah, taking on d4 could be a thing here. We would love to play what is the, uh, what's the tactic, right? Get the bishop here mating here on a6 right you always think that so it would be like rook c1 move the bishop but you would need to move it back this way rook takes c6 and then bishop a6 mate that would be fun right that's a fun line but the bishop can't back up you can't back it up i do love like b4 a lot though after b4 you have b5 rook to c1 is coming maybe rook c1 first because if you ever play b5 or playing c5 cementing the bishop in and you can't actually do it as much as you wanted to maybe a4 a5 a6 though Rook c1, and then, yeah, this pawn's weak. So we have some huge counterplay. I like rook c1. If knight takes, rook takes c4. Keep the pressure on him. But black is definitely doing a great job of central control. I have a knight right in the center here. And I have a bishop right in the center here. Like, you're not be being able to do anything. Bishop e3 and d4 center for white is winning. I mean, he could be. I, 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 White's the favorite. Absolutely favorite. Maybe not winning yet, but he is definitely a favorite here because he's pressing forward. You know, whoever gets to the king first and opposite side castles is going to win. And as we see here, uh, black is castle queen side. White's on the king side. And it look look at this. Yeah, it looks like, wait, bishop, X, bishop takes f2. Ooh, tactics win games, big fella. I'm in the house now. I'm in the house, but he plays king b8, and he's like, what do you do now? So that actually wasn't as good because, again, that file's blocked. This is what we talked about, right? b5 blocking the file. If he plays c5, you can't get in there. And now this is this is okay. This is actually okay. b6, like you can't do anything. Okay, well, now we have a target. Now we have a target. Question is, are we able to neutralize? Knight takes, takes rook d2. Rook d2, what do you do? You got to play like queen f3, and then we're going to dub on the bub, maybe. Or rook e2, we could dub, though. We could still dub. Get the last piece in the game. Can't you do well against Levy? I think it was pretty close until Bullet. Thank you very much. Olympia, that's facts. I'm 800 trying to understand what's going, and I just can't. Hey, you, you got to keep working. Got to keep working, man. You got to keep working and get some fundamental understandings of the game. Um, and that will help you a lot more, bro. But it's, it's about experience. Are you the best chess host ever? I mean, you know, if there's others out there. You know, there's others out there, man. But I like, I just like, I like doing it. Love explaining this stuff, man. This is what I do, bro. And it's also like free lessons. I'm watching MVL play another 2900 GM here, right? This is who wouldn't want to do this? Like, this is free lessons every Tuesday. This is great. E5, rook check, king out the way, king h2, pawn takes, and rook takes e6. It also helps me too. Like, I'm looking and I'm watching stuff. And if I'm getting stuff right, it's just you're, you're playing good chess. Playing good chess, but that comes from studying working. So go in there, chess.com, go to chess.com, go to the learn tab, and don't get off of it. Pawn takes, ooh, you in some trouble. I do not like rook h1. How do you get out of this? Oh my goodness, everything is a blunder. Like, it feels like you're going to blunder. King g3 is scary because he got queen g5. Then I, just, I guess I just go back. You might have to just go here. Wow. Yeah, he's in, he's in trouble, guys. He's in trouble here. He's in a lot of trouble right now. It's kind of hard to find it right now, to be honest. It says minus four, but like, how? Whoa! Oh my goodness, Rook F1 tactics win games, big fella. Did you see that? Rook F1, if you take it, 
I was going to check you. Oh my god. What? Insane. Beautiful play there. Look at that one more time. Watch this. Watch this. One more time. Rook f1. If you take it, I take with check and then take your queen. Well, that was gross. But something was scary. Like actually, what was the move? Let's just let's just see what the move was. Engine says right here the best move was queen e3. Oh yeah, that does make sense. Dang, engine finds everything. I mean, that's why it's the engine. It finds everything. But queen e3 was the only defense. Only defense. He's going to play on as he should here because the queen, surprisingly, check this out. Like, I can't move my queen right now. I can't move my queen. So, I have to, like, use everything else. Can you? No, that wouldn't have worked. I was going to say, can we take? But then you can't get back. So, you have to go here. So, he's using his king. Wow. I, here's a plan. Takes. King f6. Rookie one. Really? Rook f6. Interesting. MBO is a monster, bro. MBO is a, a super monster. Wow. Wow. Thanks, Keely. What's up, man? Welcome to the stream. Yo, chess.com. And this is the only Jedi. Yes. Yes. Jedi. That is me. Watch over lunch. Nice. Hope you had a great lunch. High flying. Hope you had a great lunch there. This is a crazy game. Yeah, this is crazy. And he won there. Uh, tough game. Wait, what happened? Let's go back one more time. Let's see what happened here. Takes. He checked him. Why did he? Oh, he just, he couldn't. Yeah, that was just a blunder. He couldn't take. He blundered. A yeah, blunder right there. The GG. He blundered. Man, wait a second. So does that, is MVL in the lead again? Seven and a half in the lead again. In the lead. Seven and a half out of eight. And we great. Wow, great job there, MVL. And we have Yanni Pomniachi here playing with the white pieces. And it looks like a draw. Looks like a draw. Wait a second. He's trying to go for more. He's trying to go for more here. Hey, you can't go to the wrong square. You're getting mated, obviously. So, ooh, C4. Nice. Now we should be good. Probably no mate threats anymore. We, we got this pawn rolling. And in some cases, being able to try to queen this pawn. Yeah, trading queens isn't isn't advisable. No, it is. it would be a draw anyway. Because one pawn, they call it the one diagonal method from Devereski's in-game manual. And the one diagonal method means that one bishop can stop the, the pawns. So you can put it on one diagonal like this, and it will stop both of the pawns. So that is uh, that will be the key if you do trade queens. We're trying to avoid trading queens and staying. We're using the light square strategy, and and also the king's close enough now. So trading queens would be fine. Yeah, trading queens would be fine because the king's close enough to stop these. As we're just going to shuffle the bishop back and forth, and um, and while defending this pawn here, check. You don't get mated. it. Okay, it ain't no mates, but this. Hold on, don't block with your face. Okay, watch yourself. Watch yourself, my friend. Okay, you, you, this is getting a little scary. It feels like he shouldn't be doing this. It feels like he shouldn't be. Check. Okay, he's on the dark square strategy. Look at the pieces, right? One's on light, one's on dark. Black's putting all his pieces on dark. White's putting all his pieces on light. This is the strategy you want to use. This is, that's a pawn? I feel like that was a pawn. Light square strategy, dark square strategy. Keep your pieces on the color of the squares of the bishop. All of them. Should be a draw, opposite color bishop in game. It should be a draw, but hey, we see blunders all the time. Queen e1 is a forced trade. He played queen e3 instead. Wait, what happened? Something happened. The engine went crazy. We missed something, y'all. We, we all missed something. Of course, they did too. It's time scrambles. This does happen. A draw was just offered here. Draw offered again. Draw offered again. Like every move. <laughs> and he's like, okay, okay, bro. Okay, okay. It was like four draw offers back to back. Queen a2 led to mate, I believe. Let's go back. Let's see. Something happened. Something happened. What's going on, Lou? Uh, welcome to the stream, man. Welcome to the stream. Um, so something happened right here. Oh, snap. Wait, wait, no, no, no. It's white to move. So something led to mate. Queen a2. What is the move here? Mate in seven. Wow. It's queen a3 check, king c2, bishop e4. Queen check, bishop e4. Oh, my goodness. Wait, what about king d1, though? King d1, queen b3. Wow. Wow. That's like puzzle rush number. When you when you get into 40s, when you get into 40s, my puzzle rush is 44. I'm trying to do 50 this year. This is like four, This is like 40s. That was a hard one. That was a very hard part right there. And, I, and of course, with time trouble, it's hard to see that stuff. Let's take a look at the standings, though, as we move uh, into round nine right after a break here. But we're going to see seven and a half, seven and a half. 
for the big boys here, guys. Wow. I hope you're enjoying today's show. Title Tuesday. We're going to take a short break. Don't go anywhere, guys. And we'll see you right after that.
And we're back, guys. Title Tuesday is here. Title Tuesday is here. Round 9 is starting, so let's get right into it. Round 9 is here. So you see, Hikaru actually jumped up here, guys. And uh, Jeffrey Zhang is one of the other GMs participating. Uh, so I actually saw that in the chat. About other famous GMs and, like, just names. We got Jeffrey Zhang and lots of others as well. But as we see here, Hikaru has jumped back up in the top, guys. But the top score is not Hikaru's yet. It is 7 out of 8. He is working to get right back. To where he was, Lion Beast was seven and a half, and Chess Warrior was seven and a half out of eight. So actually, really strong chess here, as we only see that here on Title Tuesday. Now let's see what's going on. We have looks like some type of London system with Knight D2 first, actually, instead of Knight F3, which is the usual moves you would see. But this is still a usual way to play. Just no Knight F3 delaying Knight F3 here. Queen to B3 being one of the moves we play in the London system after these lines. C4 is a move, and you would play Bishop F5 there. But, and to play take, queen takes b2, trapping the rook. But in this case, actually, he could have captured because the rook is not hanging due to the early knight to d2 move. Capturing on b3, if you were wondering, doubling the pawns, it actually just opens the file. And those are very good double pawns. Sounds weird. Good double pawns. But usually, uh, it's okay to have those in the middle game and in the opening. Let's see what happens here, though. g6, bishop f5 is a real move. He plays e4 to stop it. Yeah, it does stop it. And it also hits this pawn. So actually, e6, that's kind of an ugly move to make. Knight takes e4 after knight takes, assuming bishop f5. Is this a move? Question is, will he play it? And after bishop f5, what is the response? f3? He takes it, actually. He says, I don't want any of that. But now, in this case, I'm loving white's position now. So for all of this, to be able to play c4 and g6 and trying to do all of this, just to get this position is actually a failure from Black's in here. Having double pawns here, they can be uh, undoubled. F5 helping us to defend it after King H8, of course, because of the pin. And then E5 um, to break up the double pawn. Like you have double pawns and we have to finish our development. It doesn't matter what the opening is. You have to finish your development. Rooks are connected for white as we have finished development. So we can go on to other ventures. Stuff like Rook A to E1, put a Rook in the center, Knight G3. And trying to pressure the center here, especially because King H8 hasn't been played yet. So Rook E1, maybe even Knight G3 next move. This pawn's hanging, what? but this one will be hanging. So he won't want to take it with our queen. Pawn takes, Knight takes, Bishop takes, takes, Queen takes? That's a freebie. Yeah, that's a freebie, big guy. We'll take those all day, my friend. A pawn is a pawn. Um, okay, so he's threatening Bishop takes H2. Maybe we just go back. So he sacked the pawn for compensation. I get you. That's nice. Cap he, he, he sacrificed the pawn here. Of course, it was lost anyway. It was doubled and things like that. Maybe could have saved it, but not a, not when we want to save. So we're saying that our compensation is the bishop pair. Yes, you know we uh, we might be down a pawn, but we have the bishop pair, which is a, a, a an an advantage an advantage. It's very nice to have the bishop pair, guys. And uh, let's see. Let's see. We got three versus two on this side of the board. If you're looking at end games, which you should be, always begin with the end in mind. If you have an end game, where it's three versus two like this, we can also we can create a pass pawn. So trades would definitely favor white. If bishop takes, we're going to take with the queen to keep the structure intact here and go into a same color bishop in game. Actually, same color bishop in game, which is really good for us. And after we have this same color bishop in game, and once again we have the three pawns versus the two on the queen side here. The queen side usually is the easier way. To have uh to play for a win. He actually took this way. That's very surprising. Very surprising. I guess he just didn't want to give up Ricky 2. Makes sense. Yeah, makes sense. Ricky 2. Kind of annoying. And then how do you defend B2, huh? Yeah, that's kind of annoying. Yikes. So he had to make this structure thing. He had to do this. To keep the pawn at least. You know, Eric is playing Hikaru right now? Oh, they playing right now. Hold up. Hold up. Hold everything. Let's come back to the front. Let's see what happened here. Hikaru and, and uh, Eric Hansen are playing right now. So we're going to start from the beginning. We got this Roy Lopez uh, Morphe defense. C3 takes, takes. Okay, let's just fast forward a little bit. He got my light square bishop, says Eric Hansen. Okay, and now I love Eric's position. Eric is trying to crush him right now. Eric is trying to crush him. E5 and saying, I'm tired of losing on time in winning positions to you, Hikaru. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of you bullying me every week. And in winning positions, too. Like, we have winning positions, too. Now, of course, Hikaru is half man, half everything else. We expect him to do things we've never seen before. But uh, this, that was a very strong move. He's trying to crush him here. And, you know, now we need a good follow-up. Because sacking would be great, but there's too many on it right now. So you can't even follow up with rook takes e5. 
So it's actually not a move. Now the question is, do you sack twice? That can be right. That's too many pieces. Like you're sacking every piece at that point. You're sacking too many pieces. Yeah, that, that can't be right. I, I knew he was going to go for He's doing it. He's sacking everything. But it doesn't work. It doesn't work, bro. It looks so good. But it doesn't work. <laughs> oh, man. Eric he, Eric has done it again. <laughs> or Hikaru has done it to Eric again, right? This is, it's, an, it's, I know he hates it. I know he hates it. Love chess. So glad it's on chess. Finally, fight back. Finally, back into it after ten years. That's what's up, Matrix. That's what's up, man. Agreed. Yikes. A deep end, says Nick Man. Yeah, this is over. Eric, is, he's not moving. He's probably talking about you know what he did. If they stream it right now, you know he's he's talking about how garbage he is and stuff. He's like, I'm garbage. I hate this game and you know going crazy. I understand absolutely. You know, and Hikaru does it again. What do you do here? King's in the center on the board, but there's no checks, no anything else. It looked good, but looks are very deceiving. Ch just more material for the Hanson Rage videos. Yeah. <laughs> Hanson Rage videos. Oh, man. That's crazy. Hikaru makes everyone look si silly. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's right. That's, uh, we, we, that is correct. You know, facts there. Absolutely. And Hikaru goes away with that one. He goes away with another one, and he does it again. The position looked very good for Eric, but... That sacrifice, it just didn't work. He was sacking everything you had and for nothing, actually. It looked good, but it was not good. And you have to like back that up with calculation most times. Uh, no, that was actually Eric Rosen, violin. There's Eric Hansen and there's Eric Rosen. Eric Rosen is the international master you saw earlier today. Eric Hansen is GM of the Chess Bros. Chess Bros. Very strong GM, Canada. King D7, King H4, King G5. Yep, there it is. King h4, king g5. Why not? This is an in game. Oh, he takes here. I like that. I mean, king g5 was, I thought like king g5 was slightly better though. Just because like you're going to take that anyway, right? This one is really important. Now you can't even do it. Yeah, so the other way was much better here. The other way was much better here. But rookie 5, there we go. That's nice. Yeah, this is winning all day, every day, in every way. King g5, king takes g6. Why not? Just take it. It's free. And it's for me. Thank you very much. King takes h5. Okay, well, we're not taking that. I don't want to mess, mess up this pawn structure. Maybe just go to the other side of the board. He did take it. Oh, because we're. how do you stop me? Even if you stop me, right? Rook h5 after rook h3. Or maybe just h7. Maybe just h7. I mean, everything's winning. If you go here, you get checked into oblivion. So you have to go back. That's what he did. Uh, rook here to uh, Lucina. Lucina bridge setup that you see at Pandolfini's in-game course. I used that a long time ago. That's how I learned in Lucina position. King here. Yep. And taking the rook. GG. That's a wrap. Man, MBL, look. <laughs> I'm telling you. MBL. Okay. He was like, yeah, I didn't do that good. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. I didn't I didn't do that good in Tata still. So what? But guess what, though? Watch me today. Watch me today. Look at him right now. Who's at the top right now? Who's at the top? Right? It's like, say my name. Say the three letters. What are my three letters? MBL. Okay. All right. Yes, sir. Absolutely. He's play, he's playing today. He's like, yep, I'm I haven't forgot how to play. I haven't forgot. Chess be like hype, right? Right. Yeah, he's going crazy. He's going crazy. This game's over for for right here. We're just gonna see how he does it though. Yeah, he's uh MVL is going off. MVL came to play today. MVL Hikaru coming. That's probably going to happen next game. Let's hope for it, guys. Hope for it, cross your fingers. Okay, let's hope we see that next. That's the kind of chess that, like, you pay to see that kind of stuff. Man, that's going to be fun to see. It wasn't 94. Oh, but he's queening anyway. It doesn't matter. Like, I'm queening. He's going to try to mate him, though. Oh, yikes. I mean, just take the knight. Like, man, yo, this is a family channel, man. Like, yo, you got to get this off the screen. This is, uh, this is brutal right now. <laughs> this is brutal, bro. Now, he's playing on because of the time, too, but, man. Yikes. This is this is pretty brutal. Pawns here and an extra knight. There's no way to lose this game. There's almost no way to lose this game. And there it is. There it is. Yeah, that's going to be a real match. A real match. Okay, we got two games left here in round nine. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Easy way to win here, guys. This should be a resignation soon. Maybe he's just going to play on. I mean, it's fine to play on. It's fine to play on, so that is it. 
Uh, on MVL versus Hikaru would be great. Yes. I really hope MVL just comes hard. And the candidate saved all the good lines. Yeah, he probably did. I'm sure he has something up his sleeve here. Like, you have to... He might even play something completely different. You know, sometimes you can do that. Study other things for months. Don't even play it until you need to in the big boy chess like like uh, the candidates coming up. Okay, so that was round nine. Round nine is over. Let's check the standings here. Lion Beast and Hikaru is probably... It's inevitable. They're going to play right now so stop everything you're doing put your seatbelt on okay hopefully uh hold your phone right oh it's going on here it is it's, it's that time it's that time the big boys came to play so we have a carol con here this is a hikaru versus mvl everything that you came to see today h3 this is all theory by the way this is super theory to be honest and hikaru actually is a a, a favorite of this he plays this a lot and i've seen a lot of carol con from him playing this way but of course, you'll see a lot of this Carol Khan at the top level, and I'm saying from White's point of view, this is what this is played um, a lot now, a lot because it gets out of the mainline stuff. This usually played, and you still get a fairly a good game, and you get something more original. Hence, that's why people play the London system too. Even though you get the same moves, you get a lot of original positions and things that rely on chess understanding as opposed to just theory and memorizing moves. So you gotta remember that here. So at D3, right, flexible, you could have played D4 as well as one of the things that white plays for in this type of setup here. You could play Bishop G5, you could play the G3 way, and then you know try to see which way I'm gonna castle. Like it's very flexible. This is why they choose this uh, now at the top or at the top level here. Bishop G2, A5, so deterring castling queen side, also uh, preparing stuff like maybe Knight A6, Knight C5, but also just expanding on the queen side as we see b5 to follow expanding grabbing some space here you may even see c5 as well you may even see c5 in some cases right move the knight you got to get yeah there it is you got and i was thinking though you had to get this rook off of this like you just don't want to sit in an x-ray and you see he immediately takes advantage of that like hey bro your rook is sitting in this x-ray this is why the best attacks are prepared so something like rook a7 might be slightly better before playing b4 here or c5 like he did in this position but he's making it work. He played knight b6 to defend on not only the d5 pawn, but put some pressure on c4. And again, rook, eight, rook a7 to d7 could be pretty nice here. Bishop b3 and queen d7. Yeah, I like black's position. Black's doing fine. But then again, at the at the like back of my mind here, I am thinking that white can launch this nasty king's pawn storm if the setup is correct. We have to defend d4 because whenever anytime you play f5, d4 is hanging. So maybe you have to reset this bishop over here, then play g4 and then f5 or something like that. But other than that, pretty pretty cool. So we'll see what happens in this game. Uh -huh, correct it. Losing too much money. Says Jackie. What's up, Jackie? Is this the two knights variation? I think that's what it's called. Yeah, I think it's, it's, it, there's like not a variation name, really. I think it is, though. Something like two knights. Yeah, I think it is two knights. But it's a, it's a, it's a rare one. It's like not played as much. They're playing it more. They're starting to make it more name mainstream because the top players are playing it so it is uh that's usually what's played now because it's something different from your usual carol cons now i do like what black's doing here all the focus is on this side of the board everything's over here so white doesn't have time to try to launch an attack over here mvl is playing some great chess okay your car got a mate with truth channel oh, yeah your car was is setting pace man love you too what and uh, what do you recommend against carol con what do I recommend? It depends on your style of play is what I like to say. And if you don't know what that is yet, then you have to keep searching to see what kind of style of play that you actually are. That's positional, tactical, maybe a hybrid. You like both. You don't really care, you know. But if you know, then you can favor your variation of the Carol Khan because, you know, it's not a one, you know, one thing like one size fits all kind of thing. Like it's a uh, it's based off of what you like to play. If you're a positional player, maybe you would go for more of the advanced variations and closed positions. And things like that. Now, if you like, um, this is crappy. <laughs> Phineas, <laughs> you know, I got to know what kind of player you are. Yeah, uh, uh, crappy. That's funny. That's funny there. But it's usually tactical or positional um, for the, for those. Usually those are like the main two. If tactical, I like uh, the Panoff Bobinick. Very strong with that. And it's tactical. It gives you, it gives Carol, it gives you like tactics position. Stuff that you're looking for if you are a tactical player. F5, F6 looks really good. And um, he's going for it. He's going for it on that side of the board. It makes a lot of sense. Thanks for the answer. No problem. If you're tactical, but you're bad at tactics, you need to work on the tactics. You got to work on the tactics. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Appreciate that, Rafi Twitch. Appreciate that. Yes. So F6 is very scary, but he does have Bishop F8. Wait a second. Hold on, though. I have these here. So F6 is like... 
That's a super, it's so strong because not only can I take on G7, but I'm also hitting F7, anything else that you do. So if I go F6, he's defending F7 now. That's the key. That's the key to this move is defending F7. So that's why he played it. So now Bishop takes D4, loving White's position here. MVL is a boss, you know, but Hikaru has made this thing like this. What, what, what do we talk about, right? We wanted to get this king side attack off, but he neutralized and literally liquidated everything on this side of the board. There is nothing over here anymore. Remember all those pieces that was over there? Nothing anymore. But now for White here, we now have this attack. Bishop F2 is kind of, man, feels wrong. Like, it feels like, like, dang, I had to play there? He couldn't play Rig D1? Like you really couldn't play Rig D1. It was defended. It was defended. So you just want to really, you really wanted to keep that bishop there. So this is kind of blocking everything now. It's kind of weird. Yeah, oh, yeah. Because now he, he would, he wouldn't be able to play that, right? But uh, he'll take a draw, right? I guess, you know, especially uh, Lion Beast. He's like, yeah, I'll take a draw here any day now, because this is not looking good for for MVL. Maybe I mean I think it's it's holdable for a draw definitely. But, uh, I mean, after this pawn hangs, Hikaru not going for a draw. Hikaru will not take a draw if chess.com didn't stop king versus king. When you get king versus king, what happens? It's a draw automatically because chess.com allows that. But if it didn't have that, Hikaru would play that out and flag you. So he's not going to take a draw here. He also sees the MVL is down on time here. And this is a big time for him to actually uh, take, take the lead. MVL just may flag. He may. He may. But, I mean, this MVL might have the draw position he needs. But Hikaru is going to play this out no matter what. No matter what. I'm telling you. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play this out. Yeah. Kenzie Rock commentary. Thanks, bro. Yeah. Not with those guys. Yeah. <laughs> we don't draw here, boys. We don't own pencils or pens. We hated art school. We don't draw nothing. Anything. Ever. Not a move. Not in me. It's not me. It's not a part of my DNA. Says Hikaru. Not trying to draw anything. MVC MVL is leading title Tuesday. Right now he is. Yeah, right now. But yeah, let's see what happens. Let's see what happens here. I mean, MVL is is fighting for this draw. Is this Nakamura? Yeah, we play. We're watching Hikaru play Lion Beast, which is MVL here. MVL looks like he's bagged the draw, but actually the engine thinks otherwise here. As we're going to improve our position, maybe King E4 to follow. And we got, oh, you can't go rook g3. If we can get the seventh rank, this is over. GG, right? But you can't actually do that right now. So you're playing rook f1. That seems scary, almost. Yeah, bishop check is the move. Almost winning. He's trying to do rook g1, rook g7. Whoa, whoa. That does work. I guess that does work. What? No, no draw. No draw, obviously. Yeah, he's he's pushing. Uh oh, I'm getting close to you. I'm getting close to you. Yeah, he gonna he gonna win this one. He's gonna win this one. This is a wrap. This is a wrap. He gonna find it. He's gonna find it. Now the next move is how do you? What's the next sequence? H4. This is not a zuggy though. Zugzwing. Yikes! There it is. There it is. Give me everything. Probably go around to the back. Oh wait a second. Wait a second. How do we do this? Okay, take rook takes f6. That's correct. Um, rook. Yeah, rook over. Maybe checks. Uh, could you go here? Mm. Play rook f7. King around. Rook here. Oh, he resigned. He takes it. He takes it and says, I am still Hikaru. And beats his chest and drops the mic. Wow. Hikaru, 9 out of 10. Fair chest on YouTube with 9 out of 10. Dang. Fair chest. Yo. Where is, I mean... Out of nowhere. And maybe not. He, he's probably creeping up. You know, the, the people that just creep up. And you're not really looking. You're not really looking. You're not really paying attention. But then until they hit you in your face here. Nine out of nine. Like, great stuff. That man is playing great chess here. We have a few more. A few more games here in this round. IM versus GM. Oh, this is a... It looks like a draw. So let's see if we have any blunders. Who is number two? Fair chess is... Uh, not right. I always forget who fair chess is. Can we get that? Uh, can we get that? This commentary is uh, it's great commentary. Thanks, JD Kai. Appreciate you. Hey, Carl's leading now. Yeah, yeah, right. Out of nowhere, the mouse is over rush. Andraken. Thanks, Andraken. Okay, Andraken. I don't want to go. Yeah, we found it. Andraken. All right. Is this is hanging? But it, I mean, it doesn't matter. Like that's how drawn this position is. It does. Pawns hanging, it doesn't even matter. Andraken. Thanks, guys. Yo, I followed and waited for 10 minutes just to tell you I love you, commentary. 
Tom Barry SC. Appreciate you, man. Welcome to the stream. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're doing well, man. Um, yeah, that's uh, Dimitri Andrekin. Yes, Russian super GM and former candidate. Super strong here. Fair chest on YouTube. Nine out of nine. Yeah, in Russia, they're like born 2100 over there in Russia. So definitely super strong. Super, super duper strong. This is a draw, though. Like, I mean, you almost waste brain cells right here because they're not going to do anything good for your chest. I'm just telling you right now, this right here, like it, now it will help in drawing technique. If you're trying to just move a piece back and forth and you're trying to figure out how to make a draw, that's what this is right here. That's what this is. This is what you'll learn from it. But other than that, there's no technique to that. It's opposite color bishop in games. Nobody wants to blunder. So we just shuffle pieces back and forth. Now let's look at this next game here. Black wins that one as soon as we come in there. And that's it. This is the last round. Check it out. We're going to watch the big boys play. That's it. Hikaru versus Andraken or Andraken versus Hikaru in that order, actually. And we have D4. Usually we see a lot of moderns from him, but he plays knight of six here. So let's see what he plays. E6. An Indian. Let's see which one. Knight of three. And we have d5, queen's gambit decline. Now we have uh, transposed into a queen's gambit decline, qgd. qgd. Mm, that's right. Okay, knight b to d7. Yeah, this is a very flexible position. Hikaru has a lot of... It's is, it is a draw offer. What? Draw offer? Who who offered it? Let me see who offered it. Fair ch Wow! Wow! Hikaru offered a draw. And Fair Chess said, no, bro. No. Get out of my face. I'm going to beat you. That's what he said. That's exactly what he said. Hikaru actually offered the draw. That is a surprising thing to me. I can't even, like, that doesn't even look right in the chat, to be honest. But Hikaru offered the draw and was like, yo, bro, you want to draw? Let's just be peaceful here. And then when you when you decline a draw from Hikaru, now he mad. Now he like, well, I was, you know, I was going to be nice to you. Now I'm about to work you. But, of course, Fair Chess... Andrekin is, I mean, from Russia, right? Like, he's super strong. Nine, he got 9 out of 9. Same score as Hikaru. Same score. So, you know, pl playing really good chess here. But he says, no, Hikaru, we don't do that in Russia. We don't do that at all. Not in Russia. No. No quick draws. Rook c1. Bishop d3. Maybe. I just like to have this diagonal at all times. At all times. It's also loose. And loose meaning loose pieces lose games. That means undefended. Like this bishop. So a lot of times it can be hit and come under fire with discoveries because it's undefended. So bishop d3, not only does it hit h7, I can also back it up to b1 at the right moments and just doubling. You just got to put your pieces there. Bishop e2, I guess so. It's kind of a gross move. I don't really like it too much. You, the intention is bishop f3 though. That's the kind of the move there. But he could always just kind of stop you immediately. Bishop c6, maybe it's not stopping it. You will have trades. Bishop d3, though, if you want to play for a little more. Choosing what that's about. Love the relaxed commentary. So glad I found your channel. This is the chess.com channel here, 1111. Thank you so much, man. Appreciate that. This is the, the my channel, I think, is in the thing. No, that's, um, that is, uh, follow those two, though. That's Hess and, um, chess bar. James, what's your rating? What rating does a series of opening plays start really matter? You mentioned Indian, QGD. You should immediately start finding openings that you like. Yeah, we have that. We have this bishop standoff right here. We have this bishop standoff literally right now. But um, you do want to make sure you, you find something that you like and then play it. Like the, find openings like, oh, okay, Queen's Gambit, look at it. If you like it, keep playing it. Queen's Gambit decline, look at it. If you like it, keep playing it. You know, that's just how it is. You have to experiment. Even Magnus says you have to play different openings to become a better player. You can't just stick with one opening uh, for the rest of life. I mean, you can, but you have to master it. And then you should go look at other openings just because other ideas from different openings can help you in your main opening. So if you go study like a Scotch game and then you play a Scotch Gambit or you play Queen's Gambit declined, you know, it may help you in French positions. Like it just depends. It just depends. Thank you so much, Olympia. Big fella, what's up, bro? What's going on, bro? Here, so uh, Hikaru said no draw here as we look at his position. I mean, equal. They do Evaluation favors white slightly, but the evaluation bar is always tricky. Like anything usually up to plus two, minus two, depending on how the position is, and you are playing a human, and you need the strength level is a factor as well, who is playing. Then a lot of times these positions can be very equal, but in, at the higher level, the higher it gets, the, the worse that position is. So this is, is very equal here. Very, very equal. Zeros, of course. But, you know, anything closer to plus one should be equal, usually. Usually. Thanks, Big Big Frog. Appreciate you, guy. My guy. Let's go, let's go. 
I'm currently experiencing a slump. Do you have any tips of how to get out? You got to play your way out of it. Play and study your way out of it. Study more. It should be, I tell my students, 70% uh, study, 30% play. So you should be studying more anyway. Uh, you know, you got to play your way out of it or study your way out of it. A little bit of both, actually, if you're having that little slump. Because it does happen. People go through slumps. You got to figure out what you're doing wrong. Rook takes d7 was a real threat. And then knight takes c5 or rook takes c5. I mean, either or one a piece. I think your pin though, so you might have to think of the rook. Rook uh, doubling on the file, doubling on the file, making some loot for the king here. Need a little cubby hole to go to. Cause just because the the back rank, it might be some trades, and, and I need a square just in case it's looking a little rocky down there. Now it, it, this is straight up drawn. I mean, every piece is doing exactly the same thing as the other. Kind of in a way, everything's counter or attacking each other. This bishop's great. This bishop's pretty good. The rooks are on the file. They oppose each other, but we got our own file over here. Hence, that's why you see zeros, because if you compare pieces, guys, if you compare pieces, this is how you can assess a position. In any position, your own position, a GM position, you can compare pieces and compare and see kind of who's slightly better here. Now, after this move, I do like white. Just slightly. Just slightly, though. Just slightly. Just because it feels like we got more. It feels like we have a little more. A queen's a little bit more active than this one. I do like this file here, but not more than than like anything. Like it, it's just you feel better. But as you see now, he blundered somehow. Somehow he blundered something. Can't you read any good chess books right now? Uh, I read a lot of chess books. A lot. But I do recommend a good chess books for you would be definitely Reassess Your Chess, the fourth edition from uh, Jeremy Silman. And Jeremy Silman's in-game course too. Those are like essential. Yes, absolutely. Olegna. Yes, absolutely. Solving puzzles is considered as studying or playing. Studying. Definitely studying. Definitely studying. Cool has great flow. Keep it up, Master James. Thank you, Lero Man. Appreciate you, man. Welcome to the stream. Hope you're enjoying everything here. Bishop to A3. I like this long diagonal. Uh-oh. Uh, he's in trouble here. Yeah, see, <laughs> he didn't take the draw, right? And now he called was like, I told you, bro. I told you. Hey, look, man. He got 15 seconds on the clock here. Hey, I told you, bro. Take the draw. I'm not going to give it to you again. All right. I got Now I got to do it. This is going to hurt me more than it's going to hurt you. That's how it is. That's how it is, bro. Six seconds on the clock, right? And you was trying to win it. Oh, I want to win the whole thing. Now he might get like fourth place. Well, let's see. Nine is a very high score. So he wouldn't drop that low, to be honest. Yeah, he would still be up there. So whoever gets nine could catch him and tie him up. Canty, are you the highest rated NM on chess.com by any chance? No, but I'm in the list, though. I'm definitely in the list, but I'm not the highest rated. The highest rated is this one guy from Russia. You know, they born 2100 over there. He like, um, man, he's like 27, 2800. He is dumb. And that's my goal this year is 2800 blitz. But he's uh, he is dumb strong. I mean, his fee day rating 2500. His fee day is 2500. He just need the norms. Like, he just need to get his stuff. You know, he need to get his uh his norms, but he's he's like he's uh he's a beast. Yeah, look at this, man. This is just like you know, what goes through your head when you had a draw, you were offered a draw, right? He gave it to you. Here, bro, take a draw, bro. Hey, let's split the prize money. And now you like I'm about to go down. Kevin, yeah, Kevin, no, uh Min is I am. Min is basically GM. Um, but Min Lee is an I am. Um Kevin Blitzstream, Kevin's on that list, definitely. Kevin Bordy, yeah. Oh, man, this is brutal. Let's get this off the screen here. There might be kids watching this here. Oh, my goodness. I am sorry. Okay, let's go over here to Lion Beast. Uh, what is Fide versus Elo? Fide versus Elo. It's basically the same thing. Elo, Fide, same thing. Ooh, is this? Wait, wait, wait. What's going on here? Mate in 24. Wow. White is winning. Look at this miraculous position. I'm checking with, I'm, I'm checking with Queen. I'm queening with Jack. Queening with Jack here, and actually, this is kind of weird. You just got to get close to the king. That's all it takes. Yeah, you just got to get close to him. Because I was like, how do you actually win this? But he found it. Because you can't really move the king, but you had to do this, and then after king h4 to defend it, then you check and then take the pawns. That was really hard to do, though. Sometimes it's hard. You got to know the technique. Said he's going to try and get the U.S. this year to get those norms. Yeah, he gonna, as soon as he do, he's, he's a GM. Um, great commentary. Thank you, counsel. Appreciate that. And now we're going to check the standings here. I know he hurt. Where is he at? Fair chest. Look at that. Dropped the fifth place. He out of the prize money. Right? You dropped from first. <laughs> oh, man, you had it. Oh, man, it hurts. He dropped the fifth place out of the prize money. I did all that work this week. Had it clinched. And then that's it. That's it. This is, this is what happens sometimes. 
you know, but he's, you know, Russian code. We don't take a draw, even if we lose it and he offer it to me. We don't take a draw. Right. So, all right. That's a uh, 10, 10 for Hikaru though. 10. Is that it? Yeah, that's, that's, Hikaru is the winner. There's no one that can catch him. There is no one that can catch him. Thanks, who inquired? Appreciate it. Yeah, Hikaru had, he dropped the game too. He lost early on, right before, I think that as soon as we got on, wait, wait, wow. Oh yeah, he's going to make it. That's why. He's going to make it. Uh, is the number next to the 9-11, the Sonnenberger score? Yes. He would have finished fifth with a draw. Oh, wow. You're right, actually. East Coast. Dang, so he kind of had to go for it. But that's tie. It's still tie. He, I mean, he may have been a little bit better. It may have been a little bit better for him, though, to be honest. Olympiad, yeah. He'd still be fifth. Yeah, dang, that sucks. Who came in second? Let's see it right now. Let's check the standings here. Jeffrey Zhang. Jeffrey. Jeffrey X. X. Jeffrey X. Wow, Jeffrey Zhang here. Nine and a half. Came out of nowhere. And then uh, Chess Warrior. Nice nice job here, guys. Nice job. And he uh, he bags fourth, I think. I think I forgot how to split that. But fourth place, basically, off, off uh, how it looks here. So pretty good stuff. Good, pretty good stuff. This is another Title Tuesday, guys, as we always see here. So stick around. Don't go anywhere. I hope you guys had a great time. Um, let's, let me actually put my Twitch in the chat one more time again here for you guys to follow me. Um, you can uh, hang out with me later on um, when we stream and stuff like that. But thanks. If you're new to this channel, hit the follow button, guys. Subscribe, all the other good stuff. We have events going on all the time here on chess.com. Don't go anywhere, though. We're going to go raid somebody. So please stick around. This was the conclusion of Title Tuesday. Um, conclusion of Title Tuesday. And as you know, it comes on every single Tuesday. So we will see you guys next week. I'm National Master James Canty III. My Twitch is in the chat, guys. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Stick around for the raid.